everyone, welcome aboard. Welcome back to lesson two of actual English with me, Jennifer Clyde. It's once again and always a pleasure to have you joining me. Now, as I did mention earlier in lesson one, that is, if you did tune in, today we'll also be talking about introducing ourselves. So today's topic is self introduction, but we're going to take you over to a much more casual setting, not the workplace, but perhaps imagine you go to a party or a social gathering with people and friends, colleagues, but what if you walk into a party? Or a room full of people you don't know. What do you do? Well, when socializing, what you can do is try to say hello, greet people casually, and start a friendly conversation. Now, that is called mingling. And after you've said hello to perhaps people that you already know, look around. And if you see anybody standing alone that perhaps looks lonely and looks like they don't know anyone there, walk up to them and start a conversation as well with very simple and light topics. We'll be talking about much more today in today's lesson, so hope you're looking forward to a lot. Let's begin with today's actual talk. Hey, Rachel. Hey, Peter. I was at a party the other day and、uh-huh. it was so good. Like, I stayed out really late.、Uh-huh. But there was this one guy who stuck out in my mind. He was really awkward and he was just standing in the corner. I felt really sorry for him. Was it the first time that you've met him? Yeah, I've never met him before. And he really mumbled when he was、uh, introducing himself.、Oh. I think he was really uncomfortable about meeting new people in a social setting. Oh, no. You know, if I were him, I think, especially if you're not used. To meeting new people in those、mm. kind of settings, I would always prepare some que- like general questions beforehand. Yeah, questions are easier than like saying something yourself. Exactly.、Right? Yeah. You know, things like the weather, that's always a general topic anybody、Brilliant. can talk about.、Right? Everyone talks about the weather wherever you go.、Yeah. I thought it was just the, the UK because it rains <laughs> all the time. But、oh. In Korea, it's the same. In the, the States, States、yeah. exactly. It's the topic of the day. And maybe something to center around your hobbies as well.、Yeah. Like if you're into sports, maybe ask some people who、right. maybe look a bit sporty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, did you see the game last Do night? Do I look sporty? You look very oh, sporty. Oh, well, I like to talk about sports. Yes. So, that's good. That would be perfect. Yeah,、then. that's true. <laughs> yeah, because you want to find out some similarities between the person you're meeting for the first time、yeah. so you can delve into deeper conversations. Exactly. And really get to know each other.、Right? Yeah, but stay off some sensitive topics, I think, because then you can hit a really awkward moment, right? Religion and politics? Yes, absolutely. And don't go too deep until you're sure you've got common interests, right? That's true. Don't start、true. waffling on about. Your interest when the other person just doesn't care.、Yeah. That's definitely, and you have to pick up on those cues to know when this person is disinterested. Yes. Yeah. yeah. One sign is when he turns your back to you. That means <laughs> they're not interested. That's definitely <laughs> true. That is a very frank、uh, way to show that they're not interested. Yeah. Well, maybe I, when I see this guy next time, I'm going to tell him these great tips, Rachel. Sounds like a plan. Okay. Welcome back, everyone. Did you enjoy today's actual talk? Now, Peter and Rachel were talking about how to introduce oneself at a party or a social event. And perhaps、uh, also, Peter gave us some advice great advice as to what you should do and what you should not do at these gatherings. So let's take a look at what they talked about line by line. Of course, first of all, Peter talked a lot. Now, he did mention that he saw someone at a party, a really, really exciting and fun party, but somebody seemed to be standing alone in the corner, right? So he says, I was at a party the other day and it was so good. Good in this case meaning it was really, really fun, okay? It was exciting and fun. That's F U N. And he says, But there was this guy who stuck out in my mind. Now, to stick out means to what? It means to protrude, for example. But if you say that somebody stuck out, the past tense of stick out, it means that that person just really caught your attention. So the first word we have for you is to stick out. It means to be very easily noticed, okay? You catch somebody or catch something very easily because, especially he, she, or it, is very different from everything or everyone else. So this guy stuck out. 
stuck out in his mind. Okay, let's continue on. And he says he was really awkward. Hmm. Awkward meaning very uncomfortable and standing in the corner. So perhaps he was standing in the corner of a room by himself, looking very lonely. And Peter says, "I felt really sorry for him. I felt bad for him." Now he mumbled when he was introducing himself. Okay, so let's take a look at the word mumble. Now, can you guess what mumble means? I'll give you an example. Let's check it out. Okay, so to mumble, the stress goes on the first syllable. For example, it's mumble, mumble, and I am going to mumble. So listen carefully.、Uh, My name is Jennifer Clyde, and I live in Seoul, Korea. I work at EBS, and、um, I've been living here for about ten years. Now that is mumbling. Now, if I want to speak clearly and loudly, I can say, "Hi, my name is Jennifer Clyde. I work at EBS," and so on. So now, do you understand the definition of mumbling? So to mumble means to speak in a very low voice.、Um, it may sound like you're even covering your mouth. So it's when you speak in a low voice, almost with your mouth partially closed. Okay, to speak in a very low voice.、Uh, oftentimes, when you're not confident, you may mumble. Okay. Anyhow, so this guy that was standing in the corner was mumbling. He mumbled when he was introducing himself. And Peter says, "I think he was really uncomfortable about meeting new people in a social setting." Now, a setting. Hmm. What could it mean? A social setting basically means your surrounding environment. Environment equals setting. Okay. So, social setting means perhaps not at the workplace. It's not very polite or formal. But we're talking about a much more casual setting, meaning social setting, social surrounding environment. Okay, let's move on. Now, Rachel feels sorry for this guy, so she says, "Oh no! You know, if I were him, I would prepare some questions, such as general questions beforehand. As you all know, beforehand means okay in advance. But what does general questions mean? So let's take a look. Well, questions basically, we all know." Questions. We ask questions, but a general question or general questions may be very common questions, usual questions that people may ask and answer. So those are general questions. Okay. So basically, moving on,、uh, Rachel says things like the weather. Yes, the weather. Is of course a general topic as well. Okay, that's always a general topic anybody can talk about. So now she's talking about a general topic. Okay, so now you know a general topic and general question are things that people commonly talk about and ask questions about. Now let's move on. Now Peter says everybody talks about the weather. That's right, and that is why it is a general topic. Wherever you go, it's the topic of the day. Now, what does that mean? So here, let's take a look. Now, the topic of the day. We all know what a topic is: subject of a conversation, topic of a conversation. But if you say topic of the day, it means that it is、uh, a topic that everybody is talking about. These days, especially, okay. So, if somebody is talking about a certain item, a certain band, a girl group, or whatever topic, and if everybody is talking about it, it is the topic of the day. All right. So he says it may be something to center around your hobbies as well. He gives an example, like if you are into sports, if you like sports, maybe ask people who look a bit sporty. Who look sporty? Who look like they might like sports? Questions such as, "So, did you see the game last night?" So he's given example. He's giving an example of the questions you could ask. Very casual and a very general question, right? Yeah, Rachel says that's true, right? Because you want to find out the similarities, similarities, the common things. The common things, okay?、Uh, what people commonly are interested in, and then she moves on, and、uh, she says, "So you can delve into deeper conversations." Let's take a look at the word "delve" along with "delve into." Now, 
Delve is very similar to dive, okay? Delve, delve into something. If you delve into something, you are going deep into it. So basically, if you say delve into, it means to, I guess, study something very carefully, look at something or examine something very carefully. But in this case, it means really get into something, okay? Perhaps you can delve into or have a deeper conversation. Now, Peter says, but stay off some sensitive topics. He's giving some advice. Stay off, okay, sensitive topics. Why? Because then you can hit an awkward moment. Now, hit in this case does not really mean to punch or hit, but he's saying, well, you can put yourself in a very awkward moment. Let's take a look at what he said, though. He said, but stay off sensitive topics. Stay off. Let's take a look at what that means. I'm sure you've heard of stay away from something or stay away from somebody, which means keep a distance. Stay off means uh, do not enter. For example, you can say, hey, stay off my property, for example. It means do not come onto my property. Do not enter this area. So he's basically saying stay off, meaning stay away from talking about sensitive things, sensitive topics. Okay. Now, and of course, uh, Rachel gives an example. Ah, sensitive topics that you should stay off are topics such as religion and politics. And he says, absolutely, certainly, that's right. And don't go too deep. Mm -hmm. Once again, it's very similar to delving into something. If you go deep or go too deep into something, you are going over the limit, okay? You are going overboard. I think in Korea, we often say, ma, okay? So basically, it's very similar. To go too deep means, that's right, to go over a certain limit. So he says, don't go too deep. Don't start waffling on about your interests when the other person just doesn't care. Now let's take a look at waffle about something. Now, waffle, hmm, we're not talking about the very sweet and delicious snack. Waffle about something means to, in some cases, be indecisive, have a hard time deciding what to do. But in this case, it means to babble on, go on and on and on by talking and talking and talking. So babbling, waffling about something, chatting about something, constantly talking about something means to waffle about something. So he says, yeah, don't start waffling on about your interests, your interests, what you're interested in, uh, when the other person is not interested. They don't care. Rachel says, and you have to pick up on those cues, meaning hints, okay? Cues, meaning hints. So be very fast in catching those hints to know when the person is disinterested. Very easy word, disinterested. Dis itself means not so. Disinterested means not interested. All right, moving on. Now, Peter says, yes, and one sign. Okay, one sign meaning a sign that the other person is disinterested or not interested is when he or she turns his back to you. Okay, turn one's back to you basically means, yeah, physically turning your back to someone. Why? Because you're not interested, right? And then um, Rachel says, that's definitely true. That is a very frank way to show that you are not interested. So frank, what does that mean? Of course, frank is a name. It's a male name. I have uh, a male friend and his name is Frank too. But in this case, frank has a very different meaning. To be frank means to be very honest to be very direct, for example, and straightforward. So she's saying it is a very honest way, a very direct way, a very straightforward way to say or show you're not interested. Well, Peter says, well, maybe when I see this guy, now this guy meaning the guy that was standing in the corner alone, right? He says, I'm going to tell him these great tips, Rachel. And about it, that brings us to an end to the conversation. Now, what we're gonna do, as you all may know, we're going to listen to the conversation one more time along with the subtitle. So here it is. Hey, Rachel. 
Hey, Peter. I was at a party the other day, and、uh-huh. it was so good. Like I stayed out really late,、uh-huh. but there was this one guy who stuck out in my mind. He was really awkward, and he was just standing in the corner. I felt really sorry for him. Was it the first time that you've met him? Yeah, I've never met him before, and he really mumbled when he was、uh, introducing himself.、Oh. I think he was really uncomfortable about meeting new people in a social setting. Oh no! You know, if I were him, I think especially if you're not used to meeting new people. In、mm. those kind of settings, I would always prepare some que- like general questions beforehand. Yeah, questions are easier than like saying something yourself. Exactly.、Right? Yeah. You know things like the weather. That's always a general topic anybody、Brilliant. can talk about. Right. Everyone talks about the weather wherever you go.、Yeah. I thought it was just the the UK because it rains <laughs> all the time.、But、oh. In Korea, it's the same. In the states, states yeah. Exactly. It's the topic of the day, and maybe something to center around your hobbies as well. Yeah. Like if you're into sports, maybe ask some people who、right. maybe look a bit sporty. Yeah. <laughs> so, did you see the game last Do night? Do I look sporty? You look very. Oh、sporty. well, I like to talk about sports. Yes, so that's good. That would be perfect. Yeah,、then. that's true. <laughs> yeah, because you want to find out some similarities between the person you're meeting for the first time,、yeah. so you can delve into deeper conversations. Exactly. And really get to know each other.、Right? Yeah, but stay off some sensitive topics, I think, because then you can hit a really awkward moment. Right? Religion and politics. Yes, absolutely. And don't go too deep until you're sure you've got common interests. Right. That's don't definitely true. Don't start waffling on about. About your interest when the other person just doesn't care. You know? That's definitely, and you have to pick up on those cues to know when this person is disinterested. Yes. Yeah. yeah. One sign is when he turns your back to you. That means <laughs> they're not interested. That's definitely <laughs> true. That is a very frank、uh, way to show that they're not interested. Yeah. Well, maybe I, when I see this guy next time, I'm going to tell him these great tips, Rachel. Sounds like a plan. Okay. Okay, now let's take a look at some expressions you can make use of. Expressions directly from the actual talk, and let's take a look at "stick out." Now, who said? That's right, Peter said. This guy stuck out in my mind. And to stick out means to protrude, to stand out, to catch one's attention. Okay, especially because he or she or it is very different from everyone else or everything else. A very similar word is a related vocabulary: stand out. Okay, stick out, stand out. It means to be seen very clearly. Okay. All right, moving on. You can say he really stuck out. The past tense of stick stuck out when he dyed his hair orange. Now, dye in this case does not mean to pass away; it means to color one's hair. So he really stuck out. He stood out because the color of his hair was orange. Okay, that's how you can use stick out or stand out. Another one: social setting. Remember. It is the basic surrounding environment. So let's take a look at some different settings. If you say upscale social setting, you're talking about perhaps an expensive restaurant. Another example: lax social setting. Now, what does the word lax remind you of? Relax, right? Relax. So, a lax setting or lax social setting is perhaps a very comfortable setting or environment, such as your home. Another one, a professional social setting. Yes, you can refer to work or a workplace. Okay, so keep these in mind. And also, stay off. What did it mean? Remember, I said stay away, stay off, keep off. They're all very similar. So related vocabulary: keep off. We have stay away from something. And here we go. An example, as I did give you, you can say, hey. Don't come into my boundary, right? Stay off my property. This is my land. This is my property. Don't come in. Stay off. Stay away. Okay. What else can you say? Stay away from me. Stay away from somebody means to keep a distance. So you can say, Hey, stay away from me. Stay away from me. Okay. So keep these as stay off, keep off, and stay away from expressions in mind. All right. And we do have one final one ready for you to go deep. Of course, you can go deep underwater. Right. Go very down, deep down into the ocean. But go deep means what? To go overboard. Uba hada. Right. Remember to go over the limit. So you can say. Feelings of anger went deep on both sides, and we never talked again. So you can say a noun, 
went deep. Okay, a person can go deep by talking about something, but in this case, feelings of anger. My anger, it, I was so angry. Feelings of anger went deep on both sides, and we never talked again. Okay, that about brings us to an end to today's actual talk expressions as well. Let's now take you to our next segment. It's time for us to listen to a personal story. So here we go. It's time for actual story. Hey, nice to meet you. My name is Peter, and I'm here from Minneapolis, Minnesota. I've been here in Korea for a long time now, and really enjoy it. It's a great place to live and work. Um, as far as my hobbies go, I really enjoy going to the movies. I'm a big movie buff, uh, and even though I love to catch all the movies and when they're out in the theater, as a father of young children, I don't really have much time to these days. Um, I also enjoy dancing. I used to be a dance instructor, so whenever I can, I go out dancing, hit the town, um, and I, I'm a big exercise. I love to exercise, so I'm into running and biking and swimming. I do some triathlons, the occasional marathon, and even an ultra marathon from time to time. Um, hopefully, I'll get to learn more about you. Now, today we asked Peter to introduce himself at a social gathering. So he imagined that he was at a social gathering, perhaps like a party, and he did a wonderful job in introducing himself. So what did he say? He first mentioned his name. Uh, he did mention where he was from, and then he went on to talk about the things he enjoys doing, such as his hobbies. He talked about enjoying going to the movies. He seems to really enjoy sports, right? Uh, he mentioned that he likes to run, he likes to bike and swim, and he occasionally does triathlons and marathons and ultra marathons from time to time. Okay, let's pick out some wonderful things that he did mention in today's story. He says, as far as my hobbies go. Now, that is a wonderful way to talk about your hobbies. You can't say, my hobby is, or my hobbies are, but even better, as far as, my as far as my hobbies go, blah, blah, blah. He says, I really enjoy going to the movies. And also, he mentioned, I am a big movie buff. A big movie buff means a person that really, really enjoys movies. You're crazy about movies. And he says, and I love exercise, so I'm into... Verb form, I-N-G, and biking and swimming. So let's take a quick look at how you can actually make use of these patterns. But first of all, when you go to a social gathering, such as a party or a casual party, uh, you can say, hi, my name is so-and-so. So introduce yourself, greetings are important, and small talk. That's right. Stay away from sensitive topics. Stick with general topics and general questions. So greet many people at a social event mingle with them, all right? Now, another tip to keep in mind is stay away from heavy or serious topics. So talk about the topic of the day. Remember, what was the topic of the day? The topic of the day is uh, perhaps a subject, news, or a topic that everybody is talking about these days or at that time. Okay, you can say, as far as my hobbies go, I enjoy, I enjoy verb and then ing form. Let's take a look at some sample sentences. As far as my hobbies go, I enjoy traveling. Or, as far as my hobbies go, I enjoy blogging. Okay? What about this one? I'm into something. If you're interested in something, if you enjoy something, try using this pattern. You can say, I'm into noun or I'm into and then verb ing form. Here are a few examples. I'm into noun strategy games. I really enjoy strategy games. Another one, I'm into collecting, that's right, collecting old video games. So basically just keep these patterns in mind. They're not too complicated. Practice and practice and they will become yours very naturally. Good job everyone. Hey, nice to meet you. My name is Peter, and I'm here from Minneapolis, Minnesota. I've been here in Korea for a long time now and really enjoy it. It's a great place to live and work. 
Um, as far as my hobbies go, I really enjoy going to the movies. I'm a big movie buff. Uh, and even though I love to catch all the movies and when they're out in the theater, as a father of young children, I don't really have much time to these days. Um, I also enjoy dancing. I used to be a dance instructor, so whenever I can, I go out dancing, hit the town. Um, and I, I'm a big exercise. I love to exercise, so I'm into running and biking and swimming. I do some triathlons, the occasional marathon, and even an ultra marathon from time to time. Um, hopefully I'll get to learn more about you. Well, time flew by very, very quickly, everyone. I'm sure that if you did tune in and watched uh, the first lesson of actual English, you may have noticed slight changes uh, between the two lessons. Now, what we're going to do is kind of warm you up as you warm up when you exercise or work out at the gym. You stretch, do some exercises, that's right, to warm your body up, and then you really get to uh, start working out with weights or whatever. So, slowly we're going to gradually take you up and then take out, that's right, the complicated forms and perhaps focus more on expressions and patterns that you can practice to make your own. So, in lessons one and two, we talked about self-introduction. First of all, we talked about introducing ourselves at a workplace, perhaps at a new company. So, a rather uncomfortable or awkward situation. But then again today, yes, we focused on expressions and, of course, advice was given by Peter and Rachel. And there were tips for you all to remember when introducing yourself at a much more casual setting, like a social gathering, such as a party. So keep in mind, when it's formal, try to keep it interesting. And of course, that's right, relax, be at ease. And of course, when you are at a casual setting, be a lot more friendly. But in both situations, stay away from sensitive or heavy topics. That's right, what did I say you should all talk about? Yes the topic of the day. Basically, a topic or issue, something that everyone is interested in at that time period. Okay, everyone, what you can do is come to our homepage always. You're more than welcome to come by to leave your messages and comments. But in the meantime, remember, next time I'll be joining you back once again by uh, talking about occupation. So in lesson three, the topic will be occupation. And in the meantime, come on over to www.ebse.co.kr. And that is all for today. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.